Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is the Two Old Farts coming at you. I'm Chuck. I'm Lou. I'm the better looking of Two Old Farts. As oh. verified by our granddaughters the other day at Thanksgiving. I, I don't think they granddaughters. said you were. I don't think they said you were. I heard. I really don't. I didn't. Go back and check. I'm going to throw the flag. We'll go uh, I don't. <laughs> I'm throw flag. I don't uh, believe you. Had a great Thanksgiving. I hope yeah, everybody out there had a good one too. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the drive up on Wednesday with uh, my son-in-law and you to go get pies. That was good. Yeah, it was a lot of fun with, with Peter going up and uh, good breakfast there at the uh, Blue Bonnet Cafe. I love uh, I that place. They, I think they always have great food and, and the service. Uh, it was just really nice. It was the lady that that served us. She was just so friendly and just down to earth. Just good old country folks, and that's what you expect yep. from that part of the country. I hope so. Yeah. What do you mean you hope so? That's country folks. That's, well, that's, that's how kind you, of, that's what you hope to get when you're there. That's your background. That's my background. That's where we come from. Well, that's where you come from. Well, I grew up all across the country. You know, I'm the son of an Air Force member. Yeah, that's true. And grew up predominantly in the South. There was a good, a John, a John Bourne Jr. I forgot how you pronounce his name. You know who you're talking about? No. He's on Fox. Sometimes he has a podcast. Bongiorno. Uh, Dan Bongino. Yeah. He had a really nice uh, Facebook post yesterday. Talking about the people from the South. He is at the Alabama-Auburn game. Oh, yeah? And, you know, the, the comments that he – he's talking about Southern people and how he'd like to adopt into the South. But, you know, he's because he's a New Yorker from New York, City, New York City, I think. But anyway, New York. Yeah, it's either New York or New Jersey. And uh, he was talking about how nice the people are in, in the front of this, you know. And the one thing that struck me is the same thing that we saw a couple of years ago when we went to Texas A&M. When the game was over, how nice people were talking to each other, friendly, no fights, no nasty language, and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it was the same way up to the stadium when we were sh struggling to get through the campus to figure out, like, where is the, the stadium? Because you can't yep. see it from where we were dropped off. Yep. Uh, and, and that's... That's the way it should be. You should be able to go to a game and have fun, just like we did. You know, and yeah, it's it's just a game, people. And so many people just take it too far, you know. And, but I tell you what, though, that Auburn game, <laughs> judging by how they played against us, you would have never known they got the crap beat out of them a week before by New Mexico State, which uh, I'm not bad. <laughs> or poor mouth in New Mexico State. They were, uh, what, undefeated? I think they have an eleven game winning streak right now, I think. And that just that just goes to what I say all the time. These are young young adult boys playing football. Some of them are more mature than others. When you start looking ahead and you get in that mindset that this is gonna be a piece of cake, we can beat these these guys. Somebody forgets to tell the other team that, you know? I take that back. They're ten and three, Dad. Seven and one in their conference. Mm-hmm. And they've won eight in a row. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's a pretty good ball club right there. Absolutely, absolutely. That's like UT Chattanooga. Even though we had a pretty good game against them, but they're still. And they're, if I remember reading correctly, they're playing for their conference championship. Uh, or in one of the games for the playoffs, I'm not sure exactly what I read about that. What I think about that game, the coaching, I didn't see. They just kept trying to run the ball. I mean, they're getting beat bad, and I didn't see them taking their shots down the field. And it wasn't like we were sacking the quarterback when he was throwing the ball. So I, I think it was a little bit of coaching on their part why they didn't, in my opinion, try harder. What do you think? Well, you know, you never know. Maybe they just they don't have the receivers and stuff for a passing game. Maybe they, maybe that's their forte is a running game, and uh, they they stick what works. It could for them be. And, 
Yeah, they're second in uh, in their conference. Uh, the only team that's ahead of them is Furman. Yeah. So Furman is nine and two, and Chattanooga is eight and four. And I think but, they're in uh, a... Mercer is hot on their heels with, at nine and three. I thought I thought I read that they were going in in, in a championship game. I'm not sure how that comes. Yeah, they're probably so... going to be playing. Fir- they might be playing Furman in the yeah in the uh, the Southern Conference. The, the, a lot of good games, and uh, you got some good games coming up this weekend. But I'll tell you that Alabama game though with uh, Auburn. Ooh, that, that just, man, that was a game for the ages. And I, I think we were looking ahead, and somebody forgot to tell Auburn. And, uh, <laughs> and, and it, it was a ball game. I went, uh, right down and, to the last seconds. Yeah, the grave digger <laughs> play. I, I thought that was pretty funny when, when they named that the grave digger play. I, I, I like – we had second and 26 with Tua – I like this one fourth and thirty one. I mean let's let's stay consistent. I like fourth and thirty one better. Yep. Yeah, that but was, that's just me. You know, when you go back and look at the play, they had three receivers at double coverage over on, on the right side in that right corner. And then now Isaiah Bonds in the um, left corner with just one receiver. Yeah. And I thought it was funny. Well it's not funny, but what the coach talk about, they actually play that. And I've read a couple other stories that uh, this week. One of them is uh, Jalen Muro, who every Friday he said they practice that play. But that's what good coaches do. They, they, they prepare you. And that ball was placed right there on the money in the corner. The wide receiver high pointed it like it was drawn up that way. And the funny thing is, is so many of their they, Auburn's players were in the middle and to the right, and he was the lone receiver to the left with only one defender on him. Yep. And Milrow put it in the only place, the best place, for his receiver to make a play on the ball, and then falling backwards, you know, the, the toe tap to stay in inbounds, just heads up ball play by both teams. I mean, Auburn shot their shot, and by God, they came out swinging, and they stayed swinging. And I think Hugh Freeze is a real deal for Auburn. I, I think they're going to continue to grow. They better hang on to him. I, I don't see him leaving anytime soon. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of coaching changes in the last few days, you know. So I really would have thought Stoops would have left Kentucky and gone to A and M. I really do, because you look at what he's done there. But I, he's not going to rise above Tennessee or Georgia. Or maybe even Florida, because I think Florida's ascended. I, I like what Billy Napier has done the last few games with Florida. They have fought and fought hard against some really good teams. They fought hard against Missouri. They played their hearts out against Florida State. Yeah, that was a good that was a good ball game, close ball game I, up towards the latter part of the fourth quarter. Uh, to the I, end, thought yeah. had, I thought they had a chance to uh, to win that game. But since Florida couldn't take them down, I don't think Alabama's going to sneak into the championship or, or yeah, to the playoffs this year. I don't. I don't, well, I don't. Mathematically, I don't think there's a chance because I think Florida's going to Florida State's going to get back in there. I think they're going to replace Ohio State. Well, Ohio State dropped down to fifth, about fifth place, and the coaches poll is out. Uh, I haven't seen that comes out what tonight. Uh, the uh, the playoff. Uh, yeah, the, the playoff rankings come out tonight. But the coaches poll and uh, the AP poll they dropped down to like filters. Yeah, they got uh, in the AP. It's Georgia, Michigan, Washington, and Florida State. Florida State and yeah. um, Washington State was was hanging tough against Washington. Yes, they were. Uh, I'll tell you what, tomorrow night, Oregon better be prepared because that's going to be a good game tomorrow night. That's Friday night. Uh, Friday night, yes. Fr- yeah, they're playing uh, Washington Friday night. Yeah. Hey, and Oklahoma State. Texas better look out 
State could sneak in there and steal a victory, but again, I don't think that's going to vault us ahead. We've got to overcome Texas, Ohio State, and Oregon to get in to jump in there. Yeah. So Florida State's got Louisville. I don't see Louisville beating Florida State. I, I don't either. That would if, be a miracle. Uh, and if Flo- if Oregon beats Washington, I see Oregon replacing Washington in the um, playoffs. But I think yeah. they go to fourth, not third. Because they're sitting there right at fifth right now. So I, so if Oregon beats Washington, they just flip places. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, we get Florida State's not going to lose. If Michigan loses to Ohio State, do they flip places? No, they're playing. I think they're playing Iowa for the uh, the championship because uh, they lost to Ohio. Ohio State lost to Michigan the other day. But I think they're playing Iowa in the uh, championship game. Yep, you're right. They're playing Iowa. So it, I don't think Michigan's going to lose. I, I don't either, but you, so yeah, you know, it's a game. You never know. So if we uh, beat Georgia, did they fall to fourth? I think if we beat Georgia, I think they'll fall out. I really do. Uh, I, well, I'm I, not sure who. I, I'm not sure what their resume looks like, and it depends on how how the playoff uh, board looks at the the. Uh, Schedules and and those you know all those kind of things. Uh, the top four teams. On, the only one that has a shot of losing this week is Georgia. They they're the ones that have a legitimate shot at losing. Um, I don't think Iowa's got anything for Michigan. Um, after that hard fought win from Washington, I don't think Oregon is going to be able to overtake Washington. But they've got think, just as good a shot, I think, as we do. But then I don't see Louisville beating Florida State. But I think I think Louisville does have a because Florida State's playing with their backup quarterback and he he wasn't bad, but he's still young. And he's still inexperienced. Uh, he's but that's have, one more week under his belt, and he's got another week of practice. Yeah, so we'll see. That's 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 why we play the games, and <laughs> that's why we have podcasts and we have people out making money off of it, right? Well, yeah, we ain't making no money. That's for darn sure. <laughs> no, we aren't. But anyway, uh, so some good good games this week. So hit like, <laughs> hit subscribe, follow us in the socials. This is our little call to action, you know. Like us in the socials, follow us, subscribe. You can find us on every platform that um, does podcasts. We are everywhere. We have our own web page, the Two number two oldfarts.com. If you type in the two old farts in Google, we're the first thing that comes up. Well, we had a had a real good trip this past weekend. A week a week week before last. Now, yeah, the weekend before Thanksgiving. Yeah, we sure did. Yeah, yeah two trips. Flew, flew out. Think- yeah, flew out to Tuscaloosa. Well, technically, we flew into Birmingham and then rented a car and drove to Tuscaloosa and spent two nights. At the fabulous Capstone Hotel, there on the campus of the University of Alabama. And you who would have thought I would have had to fly all the way to Alabama to find Buffalo Trace bourbon and bring it back? <laughs> that stuff is hard to find here in San Antonio. Where all the good stuff comes from, right? But uh, give no, a shout the good stuff out usually comes from Kentucky. Rental. Yeah, give a shout What's out that? to Enterprise Car Rental. Give, give a big shout out to yes. Enterprise Car Rental. They are just absolutely. Fantastic. So the, talk about that electric vehicle we rented. Uh, you, well, we almost went through that enterprise app. I had rented us um, a premium or luxury rental car. I don't remember which one. You know, because I wanted us to kind of ride in style. You know, and when we were doing the paperwork. The, the young lady asked me if I wanted an electric vehicle, a Tesla or something like that. And I was like, nah, just gasoline because I didn't know if the hotel had charging places for the electric car because we were, what, about an hour and five minutes away? Yeah. 60, 70 miles it is. 
and I don't know how long the charge is on these cars. So anyway, long story short, I said, no, we don't want an electric car. We'll just take a gas. And so she, what she gave me, I guess she thought was gas and not electric. Because when we sat in the car, we're looking around. There's no key. Most keys just use a fob. Then I saw the little round knob on the dash, and I'm pushing it, and nothing's happening. <laughs> you should you should have I seen mean, we, him push we were turning <laughs> we were pushing and twisting every knob every button <laughs> turn signals everything trying to move the gear shift nothing was working <laughs> we sat there what five minutes i mean we had the bags in the back we were ready to go <laughs> and couldn't even get the car started <laughs> so we went back inside and asked you know can somebody show us how to start this car and the guy's like, yeah, no problem. I, yeah, He gets in the car and he's looking around. He, uh, what he thought was supposed to start wasn't working. He's like, huh. And it took him a couple of minutes before he finally got it started. And after watching him struggle, I was like, you know what? I don't want this car. I'm not going to be able to remember how to start this car. And he did say it was electric. And he's like, well, where are you staying? We told him we're in Tuscaloosa. And he's like, yeah. Maybe, let's get you another car. And they gave us a BMW X3. Really nice car. Didn't ride as good as I would have thought from a BMW. That's not Enterprise's fault. I think that's just maybe a bare bones BMW. But I still would have thought it would have rode better. But it was a nice car. Really nice car. Rode in style. Came back. Okay. And uh, the guy that got the car started for us, he, Without even asking, he said, you know, just for your troubles, would you mind if I took 40 off of your bill? And I was like, heck yeah. I mean, just as nice as nice can be, just in and out, no problems, no hassles. I've been renting cars from Enterprise for the better part of 20 years, and I've never had an issue with them at all. Folks, you should, I wish I took some pictures. You should have seen this guy and his frustration from how to start that car. That was priceless. Me? You talking about me? Oh man! Are you talking to me? I don't see you get frustrated too much, but <laughs> I wish I I wish I had some pictures. We would put that up. It, it's at this day and age, at my advanced age, there's very few things that can kick my ass, but that car was kicking my ass. <laughs> In fact, I said, so I'm not driving this damn thing or something like that. Like yeah, like. If he was struggling to start it, and I'm trying to watch, if I got to push down on the brake, grab the uh, the gear shifter, push some button, and then push another, I'm not driving that dang thing. <laughs> Whatever well, happened was... to the get in the car, put, put the key in the ignition, put your foot on the gas, and you're ready to go. And then go. That's right. That was a good trip down there. What, ha what happened? Well, the roads were, were great. Uh, some really pretty scenery. Uh, going down there. The weather was nice, not back. too hot, not too cold. No, the, the weather was really nice. I I expected it to be a little bit chillier than, than what it was because I checked the, the uh, temperature and stuff, but uh, it, it was a beautiful day and uh, just a fun weekend, a great weekend. So I thank you for that. It was That's right there at the top of my list of all the things we've done. Or and, uh, you know, and, that and this is fun. all, yeah, but you're getting to the heart of why we're doing this podcast, because it is about you and I sharing and spending time together and doing the kinds of things that you never did do. You never took the time for yourself to do anything for yourself. Yeah, that's so true. And it kind of goes back to so, what we were talking about earlier, but the clutchiness that you get from your mom. Oh, when we were talking about what we were going to talk about before the show. So, so, so tell our tens of listeners uh, what happened with mom. Was it today? It was today. So we decided to, she said, how about Las Palapas? Well, first off, she said, how about Mexican food? I said, okay, whatever. You know, she said, how about something from Las Palapas? So I said, okay, I go to Las Palapas and water food for us and come back. And of course I had, uh, uh, steak fajita, and of course they give you the um, the sauce, you know, with and had some extra guacamole and stuff like that. So your mom takes a 
what she thought was guacamole, but was that uh, red sauce. <laughs> so instead of just going around the edges and and opening it up that way, she pushes down on it. So guess what happens? Sauce uh, air, air, all over her face, in her right eye, her left eye, all over her shirt. <laughs> and I hear something. Lewis, help me, help me. So she's in the bathroom and trying to get her to wash it out. And I said, hold your head back. Well, I had, like talking to that wall back there. You know, and she let me do it. But uh, she, I said, can't you take her in. Yeah, that klutziness, that klutziness, that is a strong, strong gene that has gone from my mother to me. And, and to all three of my daughters. All three of them are klutzes. Uh, to various degrees, sometimes one's more klutzy than the other. But I tell you what, I could do a whole episode on the klutzy, stupid things that I've done. So, <laughs> yeah, could have been killed a bunch of times. So, yeah. I don't know if that's klutziness or just stupidity or if it's a little bit of both. I don't know. But, uh, just, damn lucky to be here. here. It's just a little clutch in this, but that's what might fly fun. We'll talk about that somebody else. But I got to tell you, uh, we're going to give a shout out to the McLaughlin family at uh, oh, South, yep, yep, yep. The, the, the center there at the University of Alabama. He's from Buford, Georgia, yeah. a little place up north of yes, Atlanta, about 60 miles, something like that. And you know that Isaiah Bond was from that same same little town? I did not. Know I sure that did. Till. When you and I were looking in the in the the game program, we saw that. Yeah, uh, but that that was just really nice meeting the family. And you said, "Hold my beer while I go to the bathroom." So I said, "Okay." But come out. I'm talking to the family. I saw uh, Mrs. McLaughlin. Said she had that. They, it was senior day game too. Senior day for. All the seniors and stuff. So, right. And I right. saw McLaughlin's mom. I just went up, and started talking to him. I said, "I love your son. I like watching him play football." And that, I just got it started. Right. When you come out, and you're like, "What are you doing?" So, we started a conversation. That was a really great. That was a fun conversation. And the fun part of it was, I had my jacket with a hood. Inside my jacket, you tried to straighten it out for me earlier. I said, nah, it's all right. Just leave it like it is, right? Yeah, I asked you to get me to pull your hood out. <laughs> so she went into the mom mode. Next thing I know, she straightened this thing, pulling it out and patting it down, making it, uh, fixing it up like like your mom would do when, she, <laughs> when I'm not dressed right or and those kind of things. That, that was really fun. and. And the special moment when she gave me that pen of her son with his picture on it, and he said, on it, and it says, run the damn ball. And it has his picture in the often. He's a senior this year, but he has a chance to come back one more year if he wants to. Oh, because he's of COVID? A, a, uh, right. So, but he's had a pretty good career. I, I didn't... I remember from last year, but he actually played a lot in 2020 uh, when I was reading about it. But it, just a great family, their grandmother. And, you know, when you get to talking to people, you usually you kind of focus on the mom and grandmother and so like that. And his girlfriend was with him. I, I thought that was funny. And she said, and I'm his girlfriend. <laughs> I thought that was kind of or she, the way she said it and stuff like that. But uh those are the fun parts of the trip. And then there are the other parts of the trip. So we got up, walked across campus, got to the stadium. We got queued up to watch the Walk of Champions. We got this um, videotape Nick Saban leading the football team down the Walk of Champions to, into the stadium. I got that on video. And if you want to watch the video, you can go to YouTube, look us up at the 2 oldfarts.com. Look us up on the socials. You'll see the link to the video. Anyway, so we go, we get checked in, because we could only go into certain gates based on where our seats are. Get in, I grab a beer, and I'm like, hey, hold my beer, Dad. I want to go to the bathroom. When I come out, I can't find my dad. And I'm looking around, and I'm looking around, because I'm looking just right there in the immediate area, a little bit left, a little bit right. 
and I lift my head up a little bit, so I'm looking a little further out. And about 10 or 15 feet, I see my dad surrounded by a bunch of women. And a couple of them are his age. And I'm like, what the hell's going on here with my dad? With all these women surrounding him. And I came up, and she's like, you must be his son. You look just like him, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, who the hell are these damn women? Who is he talking to? Who does he know? And so finally, that's when they said that it's mom of the center, and then that was his aunt and his girlfriend, and, and it was grandmother too, wasn't it? Yes. Wasn't one of them his grandmother? So yes. yeah, all those all those women, because my dad has never met a stranger. But I digress. <laughs> it started that morning at the hotel Capstone at breakfast. We went up to the buffet. We got our plates. Getting ready to sit down at the table, and I turn, and my, where's my dad? Because he's like a little puppy or a child. You got to keep an eye on him all the time because you never know where he's going to go. And then I turn and I look, and there's this gentleman, a little bit older than me, younger than my dad, sitting there, about ready to eat his breakfast. And then my dad's looking at me saying, son, can you take our picture? And I'm like, dad, this guy's trying to eat. And he's like, this is Nick Saban's assistant. He's the one that's always on the sideline, keeping him off the, you know, off the field. And I'm like, that's great, Dad. That's nice. And he was just as nice as he could be. He took the picture. So I don't know if, if you know who I'm talking about. Uh, his name is, uh, what is his name? Ced is it Cedric Burns? I think so. That was a special moment. He yeah, was, he was, he was, he was as nice as I thought he would be seeing him on the sideline and, and things like that. But to meet one of the coaches like that, that, that was special. And, and there was a guy was trying to eat his breakfast. His son went over and sat down and had breakfast with him. Yeah, but that was one of his friends. They knew each other. <laughs> this wasn't some guy off the street. Hey, but I asked but him. But this is something that. Go ahead. I said, but I asked him if he would mind taking me. Oh, no. What did you expect for him to tell you to go F off? No, he, he would have said it in a nice way where you could pick up the vibes that he didn't want to be bothered. But that's Alabama, though. That's how people are at Alabama. And then and, and it goes back to uh, what I was saying earlier. It was started by Bongino. People are just friendly. And when the game's over, it's over. We're, we're friends and stuff. But I got to tell you this funny story. You, you've heard it before. It's a long time ago now. It's Auburn week. He's driving down uh, 431, going down to Granny's. Him and this guy got into an argument. They're dri driving their two vehicles now side by side. So they got to arguing. The older one was down. Of course, you know, you're not going all that fast. He's from Auburn. And, of course, Uncle Gene in Alabama, right? They start arguing. Next thing you know, they start pulling pistols out on each other, right down the road. No way! And, oh yeah, you know that's that's how it gets. You know, when in Auburn week, it it can it can get that's out of hand. That's out of control, control, man. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I always that's remember out of control. Jim telling me that story. But back back to you, and this is something since you and I have been doing these things together: concerts, restaurants. Breweries, distilleries, football games, whatever you name, baseball is. The, the, I've seen a side of you that I did know existed, and it started when you and I went and saw Chubby Checker a few years ago. Oh yeah, and he had come. He would. We were what third or fourth row. Yeah, and he came off the stage and he went in between our row, and then he got back up on stage and he's like. Come on, everybody, let's do the twist. And I looked at you, and I'm just like, do you want to go? And you went, yep. And I, I was like, holy shit. There goes my dad. We're going to go up on stage, and we're going to do the twist with Chubby Checker. Us yep. and about 50 other 70-plus-year-old <laughs> oh. men trying to do the twist, the twist with Chubby Checker. Yeah, those are fun memories, yeah. You know, another fun part about our trip was Dreamland Barbecue. I always liked them. I loved their banana pudding. But the line was long. Go ahead. Just writing down these things. Huh? 
I said, go ahead. I'm, I'm just writing down notes. So <laughs> yeah, the line was long the pocket, so and, and the security officer comes out and he says, all right, folks, this is family night or something along those lines. He said, see the folks in front of you, see the ones behind you, get to know them good. Cause you're going to be eating with them. This, <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. And then, that's where it was. We went in and we set a table. With two other, it was a, a father and son, I it believe. It was three groups of two. Yeah. Three groups of two. And you're not going to believe this. In Tuscaloosa, all three groups of two were all from Texas. Yep. Uh, they were from the Houston area, right? I can't remember now. Uh, the couple to your right were from Houston. The couple, well, the couple, it was a father son, just like you and me on the other side of the table. They were from Longview. Right up up north, but that that, that was really fun, and you know, you, you just meet some really nice people. You know, when you when you when you go out there and you just yeah. talk and just 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 be yourself, you know. Uh, but then <clears throat> you don't know how to order sausage, Dad. We already went through this. <laughs> So next time that person somebody said, at the somebody at the table asked about the sausage and they said asked the waitress how big are the sausage or is the sausage so you and I are from Texas and we're expecting sausage links you know about yay big maybe six seven eight inches long you know and when she held up her hand she went kind of like that so I said. <laughs> Because we, you, we and I were figuring out how to order. Because the last time we went to Dreamland, we didn't go to the original. We went to the other one in Northport, and we ordered way too much damn food. I mean, we were yes, like we a did. stuffed tick after we got done, and we couldn't eat it all. I mean, it was obscene the amount of food that came. But that's another story. So we decided we we're going to do half a half a slab of ribs, two sausage links. We got a Coast big thing of no, we got a. We got a cup of coleslaw and a big thing of the banana pudding. Right. And when them sausage links came out, Dad, they were not this big, but they were like, <laughs> like that big. They were huge. Huge. <laughs> so the couple next to us that had ordered the extra slab of ribs for their parents to take back, we had to foist upon them this extra big sausage link to take over there, too. At first, they thought we were giving it to them to eat. And they were like, no, no, we're full. And I'm like, no, to take to your family. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was one rib left. And the, and the guys to my left, he was like, you going to eat that rib? And I was like, nope. And he took it out and threw it in his box. Put it in his box. And we got ready to go. Yeah, there was nothing left. Yeah, they even offered to give us a ride back to the capstone. I, I thought yeah, that was they really sure did. Yeah, because yeah. – and. And I thought we had settled it at the table. And when we came outside, I had already ordered the Uber and it was on its way. And he's like, and you were kind of hanging back. I'm like, Dad, what are we doing? He's like, we're going to ride with them. I'm like, Dad, I ordered an Uber. And, he, and the two guys were like, hey, I thought you were coming with us. And I'm like, sorry, I've got the Uber. And it's on its way. Yeah. But that just goes what you said about being nice, just talking to people, getting to know them. Like an hour ago, we didn't know these two people. And next thing you know, they're offering to take us. Back to our hotel. Yeah, and those they fun. weren't crazy people. They were at Dreamland Barbecue in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, and, and if you go to Tuscaloosa, that's one place you got to go. You got it. And I, I it's, it's all good food. But I, I just really enjoyed going to the original one. I just, it just takes me back because you look at the, the building. It just takes you back in time to where it was back in the forties and the fifties and uh, when they first started out. Just one person and had a dream um, about doing something well, and what sixty nine years later, it's still going strong. And uh, and you can yeah. order them ribs to go through the internet, and they will mail you the ribs. Yes, they will. We, in fact, we did that one year for our <laughs> Alabama Auburn game. Uh, the food guy here was, that was really good. Maybe eleven years ago, mm -hmm. twelve years ago. It's been a while. You know what? It was the the Auburn game in 2011 after I graduated at Alabama. We ordered the ribs. That was the first time in 2011 that we went to Dreamland. Yeah, but it was it was good. Uh, just a lot of fun. It was it was a 
real special weekend for me. Uh, so I really enjoyed it. And I, we had a lot of fun and met a lot of nice people. And, and that's the way it should be. You go to a game, you ought to have fun. You go home and have some great memories. Yep. So it's about time to wrap it up. We went a little long. We went a little 36 minutes. I guess that's making up for the short one that we did on Thanksgiving. Uh, thank really? you all for listening. Um, apologies to you all hearing my cough. Allergies have been really bad here right now. And so I'm, I'm battling that. But so please don't be distracted by my coughing. I'm sorry. It's been a great week. It's been a busy week with Tuscaloosa. The Auburn game, Thanksgiving, family in town, going to get pies. Bit, we, we, we've done a lot in like the last 10 days. It's, it's, been, it's been a fun two weeks. I uh, really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed it when uh, your daughters are down and your grandchildren are down and uh, seeing them grow and, and having fun around them. Yep, that's what it's all about. Yes, it is. And, and maybe in upcoming episodes, you and I can start dishing out some life advice. And maybe I can get you all to reach out to us on the socials and ask us questions about, you know, ask us questions and life advice. Because at our age, we've lived quite a bit of life. Some of us have lived a little bit more life. But <laughs> so in coming episodes, I'd like to start doing that. I'd like. I need to reach out to my buddy Jay, who runs um, a heavy metal website here in San Antonio. He's done a lot of interviews with uh, the, a lot of the bands that come through town, takes a lot of the pictures of the bands when they come through town because he gets press passes and whatnot. I'd like to get him on the show as a call-in. And we need to reach back out to um, the center, his mom. I've got um, her it's sister's awesome. text. Yeah. Right, and... We need to reach out to her and find out when and if she would be available to call in on the podcast and talk, you know, about whatever she wants to talk about. Yeah, that would be pretty nice. That'd be pretty awesome. It just really yeah, we've nice. been a little hesitant about trying it, about trying to get people to interview. So I think it's I think it's time to start. I I agree and. That would be that would be two good uh, areas to, to focus on to begin with. Yeah, some football, some uh, music, and maybe that could be a launching pad into getting some actual musicians to you know sit on our fledgling little podcast. Well, thank you all for listening. Um, we're the two old farts. Like I said, uh, hit like and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, Pandora. Player FM, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music. You can find us everywhere. I think you can even find us on Audible. All right. So how many downloads think, we had so far? I thought you said 3,000 and something. 3,075 at last count. Let me look. We we 3,070. Just uh, yesterday, we had the most downloads in one day, 16. That doesn't sound like a lot, but that is a lot for us for one day. Uh, again, we're having that international reach. We've had three from Canada. Um, I think it's the same people from Ontario. I don't know what the odds are that Ontario, Canada is downloading our podcast, but I think it's the same people. And we've had Ontario and British Columbia, uh, the UK and France. So thank you all for listening and, and downloading. Maybe you stumbled across us by accident and hopefully you like us. But like I said, hit like and subscribe. We are the two old farts. My name is Chuck. And I'm Lou. Are you the better looking of the two old farts? Well, that's kind of, that's where it is. I'm the better looking okay. of the two old farts. <laughs> all right. Give us a, give so, us a shout out. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, this is fun doing this. Yes, it is. All right. All right. Y'all take care. Love you guys. And y'all have a good, uh, good week. Thanks. Hey, love you too, Dad. All right. Bye. All right. Bye.